Hello and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for uh, another video about the West Coast Eagles. Again, part of Eagles Corner, I guess. Um, part of my routine now is like once a week, I'll upload some sort of West Coast related video. So the topic of today's video is analyzing um, what the Eagles really need to do at this upcoming draft. Now, I've made a lot of content around the Harley Reid space and trading pick one. This video is gonna be a bit more of a holistic view of uh, what do the Eagles actually need at the draft this year. It's a pretty analytical piece. I've, I've knocked up like three different versions of our best 22 to try and do a bit of a list analysis to see what types of players do the West Coast Eagles need to target in this year's upcoming draft with also taking into account what talent is actually available, what types of players are likely to be available at our respective picks. The Eagles already, uh, you know, a couple of years into what is probably going to be a long and arduous rebuild. Uh, but the, the interesting part about that is that it kind of means that our list is somewhat of a, of a blank canvas. I do think over the last couple of years we've um, we've done a pretty good job of getting the talent in through the opportunities we've had you know we took an extra first round draft pick last year I think we've had some relative success with the mid-season draft we had pick one both years in a row that could be the case three years in a row I think we've done pretty well in the second rounds of the last couple of drafts and then you know in the fourth round getting Noah Long last year I think we've done pretty well in terms of injecting some talent in the list so I guess the purposes of this video is to sort of map out what our list currently looks like at least what it's going to look like in a few years and plugging some gaps and uh, looking at what we need at the draft table. Before we get into the video, guys, if you are enjoying the content at the moment, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. The growth of the channel has been wonderful so far. If you're an Eagles fan, make sure you subscribe for plenty of Eagles content both now and next year. If you're not an Eagles fan, don't stress. There is plenty of non-Eagles related content all throughout the channel. I'm uploading like one to two videos a day at the moment. So if you are enjoying the content and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thank you. Okay, so to, to work out what our list gaps are, uh, what I did was map out our best 22, and then I have also mapped out what our reserves team will look like, you know, a back, backup 22, basically. Every list has 44 players, so in theory, you should be able to fill out two times 22 players. We've obviously got five list spots at the moment because we have delisted a heap of players. Then there's a couple in there that are Category B rookies as well, um, which means there are extra players on the list, so we kind of have a list of 46 in theory. So what I've done to, to start this analysis was map out what I think our best 22 is, and I'll get it up on the screen here. It's also color-coded. So first of all, don't look too too in depth as to um, with the players that I've selected as part of our best 22. I kind of just went for you know the experienced and best case scenario of our best 22 if they're all fit for round one, which is probably not going to happen. Is this the team that I would pick for round one? Not necessarily, but uh, this is more or less, if you gave players a FIFA rating, this is probably you know the best combination of 22 players that I got in there. So what I have done to help this analysis is kind of color coded it as well. So um, for instance, there you've got three, no, four different colors. I really went out on this one. In red, we have got five players there that I think are likely to be gone by the end of next year. So they're, they're the veterans, okay? The, the players that are unlikely to play beyond their next extension. Um, so that's McGovern and Cripps. They're both contracted to the end of next year. I think Yo, Gaff and Darling are all contracted to the end of this year. So the, the benefit of the colors is to sort of demonstrate, you know, how mature this 22 is, okay? In the blue, we've got players that are in their prime, but probably quite deep into their prime, if that makes sense. So, you know, Barras, um, how old is he? He's 29 next year. Kelly, Hunt, Duggan, Cole, Sheed, these types, they're all, uh, they've all been in their prime for a little while now. In the green, I've got players that are sort of in the early parts of their prime, okay? And this is relevant because you need to know like w maybe we don't see the gaps right now, but in a few years we might. Um, you know, Oscar Allen obviously is at the start of his prime. He turns 25 next season. Waterman, Petrocelli, Williams, uh, Flynn and Jermaine Jones are the other players I have there. And then in the yellow, I've got promising uh, young quality talent. And uh, obviously these guys are probably going to be in the best 22, I think, for round one. That's Hoff, Long, Hewitt and Jinby, okay? So that's mapping out the age distribution distribution as well. You can see that all the, the red means that these players are going to be phased out soon. The blue, to a lesser extent, the same thing. And the green and yellows are the guys who are going to be around for a long time. What does that best 22 look like? Well, I'd say a, in a clear lack of experienced midfield depth, or at least quality depth. You know, there's Kelly and there's Sheed. Gaff has dropped off a long way and then Jinby and Hewitt, uh, the backup mids there. Not a whole lot of depth there is there. But anyway, we'll move on. And this is arguably what we need to be looking at more. And this is our, you know, our Waffle Eagles best 22 by the start of round one, okay? So the color coding is different, okay? Forget the what the different colors meant on the first 22 there. This These colors mean something different. So in the red, I've got three players there that I think are probably favorites to be delisted within a year. Both, all of them are in, out of contract at the end of this season. So that's Rotham, Witherden, and Edwards. In the blue, we still got speculative players there that 
have the potential to go either way, really. Um, either we don't know enough about them or we, they're just kind of at a crossroads. So you got the two Category B rookies in Dewar and Baker. I've barely seen those guys play. I think it's too harsh to say they're, they're red. Maybe I was a little bit generous with Zane True there. He probably could be red because, uh, to be honest, he doesn't even have a contract yet. He hasn't actually signed a contract yet. I'm assuming that he's going to be on the list next year. Harry Edwards, Jamison, Cully, these are guys that have shown a bit, but um, there's still a bit of a way to go. In the green, we've got players that I think are you know relatively safe in the medium term. I think... I'm confident that they'll be around for the medium term, so no real imminent prospect of getting delisted, I would have thought. And then there's um, some yellow gaps there as well. So if you look at the gaps there, that's what we're really looking at here. If you're looking at our depth, what do we? What does this 22 lack, considering we filled out two teams now? Well, it lacks, you know, a half forward and a few midfield rotations. That's probably the, the first thing I would look at addressing is some midfield depth. Uh, we need some top end talent. So in my opinion, our first pick this year needs to be a midfielder. So whether that's Harley Reid with pick one and turn him into a midfielder, he's kind of a he kind of plays every position, but uh, you know he'll be a midfielder at the next level. Colby McCurcher as well as the other one. In an ideal world, we don't go Dersma. In an ideal world, we don't go Curtin. That's just my personal preference. I know there's talk of both Dersma and Curtin becoming midfielders at the next level, but either way, it needs to be a midfielder whoever we take first. In my opinion, I think we also need another quality outside mid slash wingman. Um, that's probably what this young midfield sort of lacks you know you got Jinbi and Hewitt in that best 22 in this 22 here we've just got True and Cully basically Chester and Edwards are the wings but I think you know some outside polish is probably also what we need uh, I think we also could be looking at a key defender post McGovern McGovern is going to be uh, well, he's out of contract at the end of 2025, which means we've got a couple of years there. So if we can nab a key defensive prospect to sort of help that transition so that in a couple of years, hopefully Bazo and Edwards are ready to go, but then that key defender is playing in the waffle and developing too. We also probably lack some some medium to small options in the forward line as well. So there's Dewar, uh, obviously a little bit speculative. Um, he, he had a pretty good debut season in the waffle, I would have thought. Um, but, you know, Marek, he's a gun. Brockman looks promising. Barnett and Williams are relatively unproven. So I'd say that's forward line options some depth there in addition to Brockman who we've traded in I think we should be looking at that part of the ground too so to take this analysis further I've done a third best 22 I like doing spreadsheets uh, this particular team is our 25 and under team which I think is another good way of analyzing the list in terms of what our gaps are and where our strengths and weaknesses are again it's color-coded so red I've got speculative very speculative actually so Jordan Baker Luke Edwards and Tyrell Dewar um, all you know not certain to be on the list next year so we can't really necessarily say that we've got that spot locked down, so that's why I've got that in red. Blue is comparatively safer players, but still not you know guaranteed to be part of the, the team long term. I include like Chesser in that, Harry Edwards, both guys who I look I like the look of, but you know to, both of them actually suffered some injuries and uh, they, they need to keep improving for sure. Burgill we just haven't seen yet. Barnett's played one game. I like the look of Petrocelli and Waterman, um, and obviously Brockman looks promising, but you'd be silly to say that they're safe bets to be part of the long-term team for our next finals push. In the green, you've got players that I'm pretty damn confident about. So your Longs, your Hewitts, your Allens, Jinbi, Hoff, and I'm a big fan of Bazo. And Bailey Williams, I think, announced himself this year as uh, you know a genuine AFL player. Whether he, he's number one ruck in the future... Probably not, but I'm prepared to say green for him. He's a safe bet. And then Ryan Merrick, who I've banged on about all year, a big fan. So again, what does this team lack? I would say some outside polish. You look at that Cully, Jinby, Hewitt mix there, and they're all probably quality inside mids. Uh, but uh, aside from Chester and Edwards, there's more speculative. I'd say, uh, again, another genuine wingman on the list sometime soon would be something we need. Again, some top-end midfield like that. Midfield is promising. Jinby and Hewitt are good players, but uh, the engine room is so important to building a premiership-winning team, and I do, we've, we're far from having all the pieces here, that's for sure. Scoring power as well. If you look at that forward six, right, there's not a lot of scoring power. Oscar Allen, yes. Marek, to a certain extent, but... You know, know a long gun player, absolute gun player, but when talking about a player who can regularly hit the scoreboard, he looks more like a crafty player who kicks, you know, maybe a goal, goal and a half a game. That's just not his strong suit to hit the scoreboard regularly, I would argue. He could potentially even be a midfielder. Same thing with Brockman, you know, he's crafty, he plays a role, he's a busy pressure player, but, you know, we're talking about, you know, having the next Lacroix or Liam Ryan in our team. 
that's the sort of player, someone who actually hits the scoreboard regularly, someone who kicks two goals a game, 40 goal season, that's that's happy days. Other than, you know, Allen and potentially Marrick, who I think has that potential, you know, none of those are real scoring players in the sense, you know, even Petricelli, who I think had a really good year this year, he's not going to hit the scoreboard regularly enough. So I hope I've summarized that point well enough. And then finally as well, probably just another medium defender, but I feel like you can pick those ones up later in the draft. It doesn't necessarily have to be a first rounder, but we'll see. I think the game is also predicated these days on a lot of running carry and, you know, another Brady Hoff or something like that would be, uh, that would go down really well. So uh, to summarize everything I've just talked about there, what do we need at this year's draft? So a top end midfielder. So like I said, our first pick needs to be some sort of midfielder. Uh, I'm hoping if it's not Reed, it's going to be McKercher. That's my preference. I wouldn't I wouldn't trade past pick two, hypothetically. Um, then, you know, Curtin, I, I probably wouldn't take my first pick, but if we did have a second pick in that top 10, absolutely would take him. Um, but yeah, first priority, a midfielder onto this list. I would love a genuine wingman. The thing is, uh, you know, analyzing this year's draft and where our picks sit. As it currently stands, obviously nobody can really predict how the draft will go, but as our picks currently stand, there isn't really a clear wingman option around our pick. So unless we do a trade and end up with a pick in the mid first round, that's where, you know, Caleb Windsor, maybe even Hardiman, if they see Hardiman as a potential wingman, um, young uh, Swan Districts, I think, uh, halfback flanker, he's a defender primarily, plays a little bit on the wing as well. So there's a couple of options there if we do find ourselves, you know, in middle of the first round. I'd like a dynamic forward and there, there are options in this year's draft. It will rely on a few sliders though. So again, it depends where our picks are, but you know, Falstrop, Darcy Wilson and Collard are all players that could go late first round. Uh, we have picked 23 at the moment, which probably pushes us into the 20s. So that's probably looking a little bit ambitious unless we trade up. Uh, there's a couple of options in Jack Delene, a small forward from South Australia. He should be there, you know, potentially by our last pick. Ashton Moore, again, a player that was considered a top end talent at the start of the year, has slid really, really badly, but he is genuinely that sort of player, a dynamic forward who could potentially play on a wing or something like that, but primarily marks and kicks goals. Then I would say, you know, I, I think we need, I'd like at least one tall from this year's draft and there are a lot, a lot of tools going in this draft not really in our range but I think this is an opportunity to draft a half decent key back for instance then I would probably be looking at uh, you know it could Ollie Murphy slide Zane Zakostelski from uh, from Claremont he's had a really good end of the season and tested really well at the combine uh, he is a chance to maybe be picked up at 23 like he could bolt further than that we'll see what happens there but I wouldn't mind him at our second pick then there's someone called Ari Schoenmaker from Tasmania. Uh, he'd probably be one I'd be considering at 37, not earlier than that. But it would be nice to have a tall somewhere in this draft mix. Now, as far as I'm concerned as well, a key forward is got to be something that's on our shopping list either this year or next. So this year, there's probably like one other than Jed Walter that's probably worth taking a punt on, and that's Archer Reed. Again, that's probably more of a later, you know, pick 37 type operation. He's he's about 203 centimeters, really athletic and agile, but certainly considered a speculative one. You know, he's a project player. If he's there and we take him, I will be comfortable with it because I think we do need another genuine key forward with Darling on the way out soon. Or do we load up for next year and go for Logan McDonald? I, probably be bloody happy with that too to be honest so key forward's not an urgent priority but if it's not this year it's probably going to be next year uh medium defender you know there's some options in this year's draft probably at our second pick there's hardeman if he slides that far uh, i'm probably more of a fan of guys like archie roberts and angus hasty uh, both offered a lot of leg speed and dash uh, hardeman sort of looks more like a duggan type to me but again i'm still feeling out these players and getting an opinion on them but to summarize you know in terms of our mix i think we go we definitely need a midfielder first up. That's our priority, in my opinion. But it would be nice to have like a mix of, say, midfielder, maybe a dynamic half forward, a tall in there somewhere, probably a key position defender, just to have on the list as a uh, developing backman. And then, you know, with that fourth pick, probably go a midfielder, maybe a Clay Hall or someone. I've just done a video on Clay Hall, and I think he looks a likely type, or a running defender as well. Not necessarily all in that order, but that is a general mix I would go for, and that is sort of what our list needs are, in my opinion. It looks like next year's draft um, is very midfielder top heavy at, at the start. Not too many key positional players likely to go in the top five. We're gonna probably have pick one, let's be honest. But if it's not pick one, it's probably not gonna be less than pick five. Hence why I wanna go midfielder early and then probably plug a few gaps with the later picks because the later picks are a little bit later and, and they're pretty speculative. But now I'm gonna flip flop on this so much between now and the draft, but I'm just becoming increasingly confident we are gonna trade uh, pick one and get multiple picks. I think, you know, I can see it happening where maybe North Melbourne flip 
split 15 and 17 for Geelong's eight, and uh, they get pick eight from Geelong. They offer us two and eight for pick one. And I will save the fully expanded answer for another video, perhaps, because there's going to be more Harley Reid videos. You can bet on it. But I've got this pretty confident feeling that the Eagles, this whole time, we're pretty open to trading pick one. We'll save that discussion for another video, but um, I would be okay with it. If we get McKercher and Curtin, very, very happy with that. But like I said, today's video was really about mapping out our list needs. So I uh, hope you got something out of it. By all means, give me your own input as well. Different opinions. We all got to rate players differently. I'm sure everyone's color coding would be different to mine. And also Eagles fans, you know, what sort of players do you want us to draft in this year's draft? But for now, I'll leave it there. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.